remember to like and subscribe. How's it going everybody? This is Jay with Kinetic and this is a video I've wanted to make for a while but recently my partner and I have some newborn twins and that's taken most of our time. But let me walk you through this. This is something I see online all the time in the Facebook groups and it's something I wanted to address and kind of make a video and show everybody, hey, you, you can do this too and it's pretty cool. So if you look here, I have two Yamaha DM3s and they are essentially being treated as one bigger mixer. And I am, because the DM3 does not have Dugan natively on it, I'm using an older Dugan D2 for my auto mixing. And my thought processing is, my thought process with this experiment was this. This console would be my mic group up to eight, and this console could be video inputs such as playback, graphics, or walk-in music, cue lab, stuff like that. And that way I have a degree of separation, but I'm also giving myself more channels and more faders to work with. Let me talk you through signal flow. So with this console, what I'm doing, follow me, uh, the console on the left, I am taking inputs from this Rio in. And the inputs are coming as analog outputs from these ULXD receivers. And the outputs on these ULXD receivers are feeding line level to the Dugan D2. And then the Dugan D2 output is feeding the inputs of the Rio. Something I, I think is worth noting with the D2, a lot of the times you're gonna have a podium in your setup and maybe you wanna land your podium in your Dugan group. I have put a ultra gain digital uh, preamp strip from Behringer because it was the only one I could find and the only one I thought really warranted the purchase in this uh, Dugan D2 rack because I can take a podium in, provide it with phantom power, and then it'll spit out line level on the back into the D2 because the D2 wants everything to be line level. And with this at least, I could take a couple podium mics in with my microphones and I can have a Dugan auto mix group of up to eight channels. Now, if we walk back over here, I have those channels I just described to you on the Rio landing on this console via Dante. And then I have the stereo master output of this DM3 feeding as a subgroup. Uh, it's actually returning as channels on this DM3. And channels one and two, I have mic mix. So this is the return from this stereo output of this. So it's cascading into that console. Right now it's at 48K, and if we listen to it, if I pull up a microphone, check, 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 I can't perceive any latency. Check, 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 and as we can see, Dugan is doing its job, so one microphone, check, 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 two microphones, and then check, 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 same time. So we know our auto mixer is doing its job. And then speaking of this, the D2 controller, that comes with the D2 is, is really cool. You can run a five pin cable with it and set this up at the console, which is what I did to make a nice remote. And then uh, I just made a little mount for it to sit on top off some, uh, some old uh, like rack mounts that I've found. And I just cut them down and made some little feet for it so it'd sit nicely right here. But you could do the same thing with the remote. And that way you could see your auto mix group you can add weight where you need right here as the operator. You still have some tactile you know, response to what you're doing. You're not separated from that as the engineer. Anyway, our mics are right here. Check, 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 check. And those land as a return on this console. And then I have QLab acting as a video source or just a playback source here. And now if I bring up Mac over here, I've done that. I can, if I want, I can make a custom uh, fader group here and take the mic mix faders out of them so they're still there in the background, but they're not eating usable faders. And, and that way, I, as the operator, if I have you know more playback devices, those aren't eating up faders. And because this is a 22-channel mixer, the return from this one only eats two, so you still have 20 channels available. Um, the master, the stereo output on this console is feeding the outputs of the Rio. So again, you gotta be pretty versed in Dante to, to accomplish this. The inputs 
on the console on the left are, are taken <clears throat> from this Rio, and the outputs are, are fed by the console on the right, and in this case, it's just feeding a Fostex. Um, I kept my network very simple on this demonstration. Everything is set up to just be DHCP, and I only used primary. I didn't put secondary lines in. And I'm using Netgear, I believe these are 4250s, as my switches. So if you wanted to re recreate this for yourself, that's what I have. I have two DM3s. I have a Dugan D2. In this, I have a, a Behringer UltraGain digital channel strip, uh, preamp strip to provide phantom power if I needed it to a, a gooseneck microphone. And I have a Rio acting as my stage box at the stage. I'm using ULXDs as my microphones. And speaking of that, if I wanted to, um, I could still have a laptop up near the console and I could pull telemetry from wireless workbench uh, if I really wanted to get that battery data and signal strength data as the operator, you could do that too. There's a lot you can do with a little. So in this case, you're like, oh man, like not everybody has access to everything I'm looking at here, but you could take this thought experiment and scale it as needed for yourself. And I think this is a really good way of doing it. And again, my sample rate in this thought experiment is 48K, but the Yamaha DM3s and the Rios will do 96K as far as their sample rates. If you look right here, we go into the word clock, I can change this to 96K on both consoles and the Rio and the I, I can change it on everything in this single path except for the ULXDs. And since I'm taking analog from the ULXDs, it doesn't matter anyway. I'm not, I'm not taking any Dante channels from the ULXDs. But I could lower latency if I wanted to lower it by going to 96K. Again, though, let me, just to, to conclude, I have two Yamaha DM3s. This one on the left. Check, 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 check. Microphone group, this one on the right. It's just some royalty free QLab music. And the output from this console is feeding my PA. The main stereo output from this console is going to return as channels on this console here. And I think this is a really cool experiment. If I was tapped on consoles and I had to make something work, um, this would be great, and I would see no problem with this at all. And I think any operator could make this solution work for you know up to eight microphones, and up to you know a good amount of video sources, and still have the amount of faders that you want to have. Again, thanks for watching, and have a great time. Happy mixing. Remember to like and subscribe.